Okay, day two of peak week is here. It is Tuesday, October 8th. And I'm grinding coffee. <laughs> And I just realized, because I was going to make breakfast, that I'm out of eggs. So I gotta go to the grocery store if I want to do that. Today has been all in all a very good day. Um, I actually had a little text back and forth with my coach this morning about how I was doing. And I just, I told him that really since yesterday, uh, I don't know if my body acclimated or what, but my energy has just really come back to me and I'm I'm eating less. This is like month this today is Tuesday of peak week. So yesterday, today and tomorrow are going are the days where I'm eating the least amount of food my entire diet and yet like something happened yesterday midday. My body adjusted, my mind's good, my mood's good. I feel good. I have energy. I finished working on the cocktail video for this week for Plus Life and I will show that to you now. So that was that, and now I need to work on AHF video, that um, the one from Out of the Closet that we filmed a couple days ago, and then I need to get my vlog from yesterday posted, and oh, what time is it? Oh, <laughs> in 30 minutes I'm doing a podcast interview with Saurav Jain. He's um, an incredible marketing strategist, public speaker, entrepreneur, businessman from India and he's blowing up and he's been following my story and he wants to share it and I think that's really cool and I think it's cool that he thinks that I have something of value to share. That'll be cool. I don't, don't really know what to expect. Oh, we're gonna talk about HIV for sure. And then he's gonna ask about uh, the role of social media and what I'm doing and how that has helped shape things. So that's the update. Oh, and I need to do some posing. I did some posing at Crunch, but I wanna do more here. Once I get all of that done, it seems like a lot. <laughs> it's 7 p.m. I have some time. As long as I get to bed by midnight, I'm okay. And I can wake up at like 6.30. But I'm definitely gonna get that daily vlog out to you guys within the next like four hours, I would say. And that's that, deuces. Oh, wait, 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 one more thing. Um, I did that extra cardio last night just because I had so much energy. I couldn't even, I couldn't even sleep. I was in bed by like midnight, but I, my brain was going, I had energy and I didn't, I couldn't sleep until like, I think 2 a.m. Anyway, point is, I think that extra cardio helped because I woke up this morning and I was a pound lighter. So this, as of this morning, I was 161.6 pounds. Yes, yes. I'll be, I'm not banking on it necessarily, but if I wake up at 160 point something, then I'll be really, 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 really happy. Yes. Okay, bye for reals. Um, I'm so sorry. I was, uh, I was wrapped up in editing and I, com and I completely forgot until I got the email. All right, let me put this on the recording mode. Here we start. Okay, let's get started. Okay. Last year on November 28th, I was searching for some content inspiration for World AIDS Day. And when I searched for the hashtag, hashtag HIV positive on Instagram, I came across Rev. I went to see who this guy is and his bio is like he's HIV positive and an influencer. I clicked on the link in his bio to discover his YouTube channel. His content was mind blowing. It had a purpose, purpose larger than life. When we think of HIV positive, we think that it's the end. We think someone would be suffering big time, getting depressed is what we generally visualize. Rev is changing the game. He's HIV positive and he has no regrets. He says, now that he's got HIV, he has no choice but to deal with it and not to complain about it or stay depressed. Rev has taken the responsibility of educating the entire world that HIV is not AIDS. How HIV can be managed with just a pill. How HIV can make you more disciplined and make you a lot healthier. Many people who discover HIV for the first time think of committing suicide. Thousands of them have written to Rev saying that he is hope, that he has changed their life. And because of him, they would like to now survive and live their life beautifully. How is it possible? They have discovered Rev's content on YouTube content that is changing lives of people. Rev, you're doing great. 
it welcome to my show i am truly proud of how you are putting social media to good use how are we doing today ref thank you so much i'm doing so great and i'm so honored to be here thank you are you ready for the digital talk show can I'm, we get started i'm so ready let's do it super so i have 11 questions for you ref and this is with respect to how you use social media in order to inspire the world but before we get started i have a question for you how did you get to know you are hiv positive and when so i was actually in a committed monogamous relationship with another man for about three and a half years and I was getting really, really, really sick. And I didn't think STD or STI, to STI because I was in a relationship. And so I just thought it was some other medical condition and I didn't have health insurance at the time. So it was really difficult to see a doctor. And so I waited till the last minute till I was so sick that I had to be seen. And at that point I went to the county hospital. I had to wait eight hours to see a doctor. They did the full scan of tests, blood work, and then subsequently I found out that I had HIV. And then a week later on my 27th birthday, I found out I had AIDS. And how did you react? <laughs> I, I fell apart. I was a complete mess. I, I thought I was gonna be dead in three years. Uh, you know, my, my doctor, when she told me, she's like, okay, cry, do everything you need to do. I'm gonna leave the office for 10 minutes call people that you're close to, tell someone, and then we'll move from there. So, um, you know, I was, I was getting ready to just decide, okay, what am I gonna do with the last two or three years of my life? Uh, do I go to, am I gonna go to school? No, I don't need to go to school or work, or am I gonna travel? Like, what am I gonna do, like, you know? So you, 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 you were depressed, extremely depressed. Yes, initially, very, very depressed. Okay, and what made you get out of that zone? How did you get out of that zone? So, initially it was education. I learned that I wasn't, I didn't have to die and I wasn't going to die and that there was medicine that was very manageable and made HIV extremely manageable. Um, but of course, that only, that only mitigated the initial depression because then it was, it was the, pro the issue of self-worth. And how did I feel as a human being stepping out into the world, into my life, into my future with this disease that has so much stigma attached to it? And that's where I had to do the real work. Um, ironically, shortly after that, I, I broke my ankle and I was trapped in my bed for about five months, still living with my ex at the time. And I had a lot of time to to think about me and myself. And I did um, meditating, vision boards, dream boards, I was doing gratitude journal every day, I was reading books, self-help books, Hay House Publications has a bunch of like inspirational authors, uh, motivators, entrepreneurs, I was just completely immersing myself in everything because I knew I had to change on the inside. Um, so that's, that's when I really, I, I think it took me about six to nine months to really start to change the way that my brain was thinking about myself, my self-worth, my health, and my life. Wow, that's a lot of time and I'm sure you have gone through a lot. <laughs> yeah. What inspired you to actually use social media to educate people about it? When was that, mm -hmm. what was the time when you made a decision that yes, you want to now go and change lives of other people? Yeah, I mean, in the very beginning, as I was trying to educate myself on HIV and find hope, I was looking, especially on YouTube, for people talking about it, people that I could relate to, sources of inspiration. And time and time again, everyone was referring back to Magic Johnson. But I'm like, that's, that was 30 years ago. Where are all the, where are the examples? Where's the visibility now? Um, and I just wasn't finding it. So I was like, okay, if there's no role models or examples to follow in social media, maybe I can be that person and I'm, I'm willing to do that because I've lived most of my life very transparent and very open and honest about who I am and that's just a basic core value of mine. So I was willing to put myself out there. I mean it took time because initially it was, the idea of doing that was extremely scary and to be totally honest, my biological father's side of the family found out that that was my plan and they threatened to... Um, disown me completely if I did it and so that was a tough decision that I had to make to help people he had to take a tough decision because he picked up a niche 
a micro niche that not many people talk about. Yeah. Stigma, they would like to keep it themselves, but this man went ahead and wanted to really help a lot of them. So he fought with his family to take the decision. Rev, you're doing a brilliant job, a lot of positivity from India to you. Thank you. Um, I have a question. I have been following your stories and mm. um, there's a lot of people who write to you mm. in gratitude. How did your YouTube channel help many individuals? Can you share some experiences of people who have written to you or who have called you at some instances where you felt that, yes, you want to give more to the community? Yeah, sure. I've had people who, they have been living with HIV for 15 plus years and have not told a single person about it. And I was wow. the first person that they opened up to about it and I think that's so, so important because anytime you're going through anything difficult, and this applies to anybody, you need a support system. And if you can't talk to anybody about something that's eating you up inside, then that's exactly what it's gonna do. So it just kind of like caught me off guard. I wasn't expecting how much of an impact I was gonna have. And when people started reaching out to me and saying, you're the only person that I'm, I'm able to share this with, it was like, wow. Like we need to create a community, if not in person, then online where people can connect because that connection is so vital. Um, there's people who said that they were on the verge of wanting to commit suicide and because they were able to see someone living healthy and, and who looks healthy and kind of is their age and someone they can relate to, that gives them the hope that, oh, maybe I can keep on living and I don't have to throw away all my dreams and aspirations. Wow, yeah. that's amazing, amazing, Lev. Lev, how did this micro niche that you selected change your life? Like, I see you doing a lot of stage shows now. How did this YouTube channel and this topic that you picked of going all outrageous and telling the world that you're HIV positive and you're living a healthy life, mm -hmm. how did this change your life, Lev? You know, it's really given me a focus in life. It's given me clear purpose. Um, and it has just been so rewarding and it's like the way that opportunities are coming and building it's it's self-validating what I'm doing and I know I'm on the right track and then to also be helping other people not just helping myself feel better um, is like I think that's the ultimate thing that you can do in life when you find a passion is something that is rewarding for yourself but then because of that ends up rewarding the people around you. Wow. Yeah. And uh, I see you have got opportunities from brands to work with now. You know, you've become an influencer and you've been working with multiple brands after this. That's miraculous, isn't it? So, you know, you took out your problem as a niche to the world mm. and, and now I see brand wants to associate with you. Can you share some of the brands that you work for today? Yeah, so um, I have a long-term partnership with AIDS Healthcare Foundation. They're one of the world's biggest HIV AIDS nonprofits, so they're extremely supportive. In fact, they're uh, sponsoring me for my bodybuilding competition on Saturday. Um, wow, I mean, congratulations. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> and that's then I'm awesome. yeah, in touch yeah. with some other nonprofit organizations that are also interested. I'm working with a, a coffee company at the moment, and then um, like a, date, a possible dating app, and then a bunch of other stuff I can't really get into, but yeah, there's a lot of stuff that's happening um, that's really cool. Wow, congratulations. How do you think people can help you grow your channel? Uh, do you want to make some appeals today? Is there any way that people who follow my show and my subscribers, uh, mm. is there anything that they can do for you? Do you want to make some appeal? Um, just, okay, number one, especially if they know anyone who is going through the experience of an HIV diagnosis or a scare or... Um, has been living with it and needs help, or even if you just want to educate yourself or someone else, um, I, I think my channel is a great tool to help other people. And if you can share it with other people, or if you just want to educate yourself and help reduce the stigma, uh, I want to say on the topic of a micro niche, yes, HIV has been a micro niche for me. However, as I grow and expand, it's not limited to that because really HIV is a chronic manageable condition. So the elements that I apply to HIV are, are applicable to diabetes, to lupus, 
cerebral palsy to many, many chronic conditions. So it's, it's the bigger that I get, the more broad my brand is becoming and it's starting to go into fitness and bodybuilding and health in general. So um, I think it's great to start out with a micro niche. That's how I made my mark but then there's so much opportunity to grow. So never feel limited because of that. HIV is not the end of life. Would you like to share something? Look, would you want to educate people about why HIV is not the end? Like what is that you have done? What pill do you take? What's your routine like? I mean, what do you do for your, from a, from a uh, what do you say, healthcare perspective? Yeah, so um, practically I take one pill once a day. It's called Victarvi. Uh, honestly, I take more supplements than I do medicine, so I, I don't even think about it. It's just part of my supplement regimen. Uh, I have zero noticeable side effects. Um, I'm also undetectable, which if you're not familiar, is a term used to describe someone who, whose viral load or the amount of virus they have in their blood is so low or non-existent that it's not detectable by current modern tests. And when you're undetectable for six months or more, you can no longer transmit the virus to other people. So I can't even give anyone HIV on accident in any situation. So that's, that's remarkable. And that's a huge reason why stigma needs to go away. Now, as for what HIV has meant for my life, um, it might sound weird to say, but I view it now as a gift and a blessing because before my diagnosis, I was living as a victim mindset, kind of on autopilot. I was going through life and I wasn't really taking charge or going after my passions. And my diagnosis, my diagnosis was essentially the slap in the face that I needed to wake up and take charge and really start to like, to uh, own my life and my health and my body and go from being a victim to a leader. So that's the biggest wow. change, yeah. HIV made Rev from victim to a leader. He took charge of his life and he wants to change the lives of people. You are amazing, Rev. Um, now that you're a YouTuber and you are really wanting to teach people your YouTubing skills because you do a good job of it. Mm -hmm. uh, what are your tips for the first time YouTubers? How many subscribers do you have today and how did you start and what are your tips for them? Currently, I have about just over 11,000 subscribers. Wow, that's good. Because yeah, it's, it's a, a good niche start. that not many people want to subscribe, right? Yeah. So it's a good run, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then my biggest advice for people who want to start is just, just to start. Don't, a lot of people overthink in the very beginning and they want to get it perfect. They want to do it just right. And the real thing to do is just to do it. <laughs> just do yeah. it. It doesn't matter. You'll figure out everything later. Even if it's, if you don't think it's good quality, even if you, what you think you say is boring, it's the practice, the repetition, the discipline of doing it on a consistent basis. That's the most important thing. And then the rest will kind of, it'll happen as you go along, as you teach yourself sound and lighting and editing and all of those specifics. Wow, that's good. And how many YouTube videos should one make every week? How many do, do you do? I, I would say minimum one a week is a good place to start because that gives your followers um, something they can look forward to. It's consistent. They can come back every week and it's not too spread out that they're going to forget about you. I would say up to three times a week maximum just to um, give your videos some space to breathe and get views and stuff like that. Okay, of all the social media channels, YouTube, Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook, I see you using YouTube and Instagram the most. Yeah. Do you think Instagram is equally important or more important than YouTube today? I think you have more followers on Instagram than YouTube. So, you know, I don't necessarily think that one plat platform is more important. I just think that they serve different purposes. So YouTube, I can do great long form videos and that's excellent. Instagram, of course, pictures and short form video is really great there. I do get a lot of brand interest on Instagram. There seems to be a lot of like monetization that happens on Instagram. A little bit, not, not quite as uh, readily available on YouTube for me per se. And then with Twitter, I just, actually just in July, I started posting regularly on Twitter and that's of course more like written word, um, hot topics, trending things. So. I'm noticing that they each kind of serve a different purpose. Perfect. 
one last message there that you would like to convey to the world today? Oh man, I would just say, please, 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 whatever it is that you are passionate about, whatever you feel that you are set here on this earth to do, do not wait until God or the universe, universe or some other higher power slaps you in the face or knocks you on your butt for you to wake up. Just have some courage. That doesn't mean you don't have fear. Everybody has fear. I'm scared every day of everything that I'm doing, but it's your heart and your passion has to be greater than your fear and go after things that matter to you because in the end, life isn't worth living unless you're happy inside. Wow, some amazing message there from Rev. People who are watching this show, please do subscribe to him on YouTube. The link is right there in the description. Do follow him on Instagram. The link is right there in the description. Support Rev because I'm sure Rev is gonna support a lot of people and I already see him changing lives. You can just go follow him and see all the stories that he shares. It's of people who's writing to him, thanking him for the help that he's offering to the means of educating the community. Ref, you are going to go a long way. I already see you doing great and wishing you all the best and to really well, Ref. Thank you so much for accepting my offer to be on the show. Thank you so much. Wow. Goodbye. Bye. Take care. Ta-da! <laughs> oh, man. I, so, that interview was supposed to be at 7.30 and I got an email at 8.05 saying, Hey, want to let you remind you about our our interview at 7.30 and I'm like, oh shit. So I wasn't quite as mentally prepared for that, but um, I think it went all right. Anyway, that's cool. I loved it, it was fun.